This is a village in central India. Its name, Khajuraho. During the 10th and 11th centuries, it was one of the capitals of the great Hindu kings, the Chandelas. Today, life here is the same as in any village in India. A simple life with emphasis on the seasons, the earth and the crop. Water is still drawn from the wells of long ago and flowers still bloom here. But a few miles away, there is another Khajuraho, the city of the gods, a land of sandstone filled with empty temples. Men come to see, but men do not live here, only the gods. But great works of architecture and sculpture are not only events in the world of art, they are dynamic creations in the history of a people. And with the gods whom they made, live the invisible hands and minds, the unseen hammers and chisels of the Indian craftsmen of a thousand years ago. During the great Hindu Renaissance, new rhythms in the human heart demanded expression. And there came to Khajurao a universe of imagery that was new and vital. Imagery now grotesque, now sublime, now massive, now delicate. A synthesis never before attempted by any other art. This vitality swept aside social barriers and expressed itself in a positive tolerance. Temples of different faiths were built side by side. Faiths different, architecture one. Men began to merge their beliefs and therefore their deities. Here was Shiv, the great destroyer. and there Vishnu, the great protector. And here, Harihar, fusion of the two apparently conflicting deities. And in the sculpture of Khajuraho, we see life whole. Kama, symbolized by six, figures as one of the three ends of human life, and also as the source of all life. The temple is the architectural facsimile of life, symbol of the world mountain, and so the ascent of the soul of man from peak to peak was depicted in the design of these domes that, like the towering Himalayas, climb through earthbound mist to a great freedom of sky and spirit. Centuries of neglect and thoughtless acts of destruction have left only 20 of the original 85 temples intact. Of the 20, we shall see five, these five being the most representative. The temple of the 64 yoginis, attendants to the goddess Kali. The oldest and simplest of the Khajuraho group it is built of granite, whereas all the others are of a buff sandstone. A Shiv temple, Kandariya Mahadev, with its 872 sculptured figures, is one of the finest examples of the Indian genius.
the balconies are so arranged that there is always sufficient light, not direct, but gentle, a restful, peaceful light. The main entrances to all the temples in Khajurao face east, inviting the rays of the early sun to enter and do homage to the gods. The craftsmen of Khajurao built to the glory of the Hindu pantheon with such intensity of purpose, they so forgot themselves that no mark of the individual remains. The architecture and sculpture of Khajurao have phenomenal unity. In this, the workmen transcended what we call style and therefore determined it. The city of temples was born of one mind, the mind of Purush, the universal man on whose behalf the craftsmen built. consecrated to Vishnu has four subsidiary shrines. All the major temples in Khajurao conform to this classical design in temple architecture. The Khajurao temple is the cosmos in miniature. Heads, apsaras, celestial beauty upholding the gigantic structure, supporting the world. Always beauty, and always beauty with a meaning, with a purpose in architecture and in life. Truth always triumphs over evil. The goddess Durga slays the buffalo-headed demon Mahish. Parshvanath, a Jain temple. Here the monks and preceptors came to chant their prayers to thank the gods that man had been given the power to be gentle, to hurt no living thing.
It is the privilege of man to immortalize the gods, but in this purpose, men tend to mistrust words, and they look for an element closer to the earth from which they came. The craftsmen of the Hindu Renaissance wanted something with intricate delicacy, yet colossal, a visible and imperishable statement of his philosophy, therefore stone, therefore Kajuraho. The temple of Devi Jagdamba, a temple whose theme is compassion, peace. The people of the Renaissance were restless and revolted against a static society and against static forms of art. There was a profusion, a burst of sculptural freedom that exploited all the possibilities of the plastic medium. Parvati, consort to Shiv. Wisdom and faith united forever in living stone. Dawn, the hour when life begins, when man remembers his creator and comes to worship. Man expresses his metaphysical concepts in many ways, but in the end man always sees the gods in his own image. As we wake and live, so the gods do. They have all the tenderness and wonder of ordinary household movement. child like any of our children, absorbed in play. The architect and his disciples plan the temples of man. And now to work, the eternal craftsmen build a universe with their hands. The hunt and sport After a long day in the forests, music. The galleries are full and the dance of stone is about to begin.
God and Goddess are lover and beloved. The sculptor of the Renaissance breaks the existing aesthetic barriers and proves that life is art. What is basic and beautiful in life is also fundamental and justifiable in art. And the culmination, the climax of beauty, that two lovers at the end of a long day find themselves again by seeing in each other the image of the truth of their living. so to sleep, a night, a generation, an epoch, until man in the sunrise comes again to ring the bell, and the gods, hearing the great clanging, wake once more.